The apocalypse is here. The entire world has been struck by a never-ending blizzard. All of the once beautiful and diverse biomes have completely frozen over and visibility has been reduced to nearly zero. Even just being on the surface for mere seconds is enough to set in hypothermia for any of the survivors. And to make matters even worse, this storm has only increased the strength of zombies and skeletons by morphing them into new chilled versions of themselves. And it's even brought out some entirely new and very frightening creatures. Surviving in this world is nearly impossible. So of course, I'll be attempting to do just that for the next 100 days. Will I be able to master the art of fire magic and take the dangers of this frozen wasteland head on? It's time to find out. On day one, I spawned in next to a couple of trees, so I quickly grabbed myself some wood and broke the leaves for some saplings. I then immediately began tunneling my way underground so that I wouldn't freeze to death in the blizzard or potentially get attacked by one of those frozen mobs that are constantly roaming the surface. On my way down, I found a massive vein of coal, which was going to be super useful because without torches, this tunnel was going to quickly turn into a mob spawning nightmare. Unfortunately, I didn't get much deeper before realizing that I was digging down straight into a massive cave full of mobs, which obviously I was not yet ready to handle. So I quickly patched that little hole up and began digging in a different direction. And after digging in this direction for a little while, I started to run into a lot of sand and sandstone. Turns out I had mined my way directly into a freaking ocean. And even though most of the mobs that spawn in the ocean aren't nearly as scary as the ones that were spawning in that cave, it wasn't exactly what I was looking for right now. So I took a slight detour and kept digging down. And it wasn't before long until I stumbled into exactly what I had been looking for, a lush caves biome. You see, during a never-ending blizzard, finding a consistent source of food can be quite the challenge. Which is where these lush caves come into play, because inside of them there is a chance for cave roots to spawn, which can essentially be used as an infinite supply of food because they can easily be grown in any underground base. And it didn't take long for me to find a couple growing on the walls, which as an added bonus happened to be directly next to a vein of iron. But before I was ready to harvest these cave roots, I needed to do a couple steps of preparation. First, I continued searching around inside of this cave and mined all of the iron I could find. Then I used some cobblestone to block off the portion of the cave that seemed to connect to a much larger cave so that I didn't have to worry about any mobs sneaking up behind me especially since these lush caves are notorious for spawning creepers. I then made my way back up to the top of my tunnel near the surface and smelted up all of that iron I just mined, and then used it to craft myself a full set of iron armor and tools, and most importantly, a pair of shears. And these shears were crucial because they would allow me to harvest the cave root while still leaving it in a form that was replantable on my wall for later. So I took these shears back down into the lush cave, harvested the cave roots, and then just spent the rest of the day mining whatever other ores I could find down there. And really quickly before I continue, it's time for today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Core. Core is an online platform where you can choose to either play one of the 20,000 pre-existing games from literally every genre imaginable, or create your own game, even if you have zero coding knowledge. Personally, I've been really enjoying this game called Balloon Simulator, which is a game where your objective is literally just to get your balloon as big as possible. You can also unlock pets to boost your stats and even travel to different areas like space and Egypt. I don't know, the whole thing is a little bit weird, but also extremely addicting at the same time. And if you guys want to add me as a friend and play along with me on Core, my username is just RageTrain. Core has also partnered up with Epic Games and launched an early access exclusively on their store. If you use your Epic Games account to download the game, you can get these exclusive skins. And Core also has two massive events going on right now. The first is their Invitational Game Jam, where by creating a game in Core, you can enter to win $140,000 in prizes, including a literal Tesla Model 3. 
And they also have their Multiverse Games event going on right now, where you can play and compete for your country in a dozen games to earn $25,000 in prizes. So make sure you guys check out and download Core using the link in the description. On the start of day two, I went back up towards the top of my tunnel and started to clear out a little area where I could begin planting my cave root farm. Thankfully, cave root farms are very, very simple, and pretty much all I had to do was just set up a big stone wall. And after I had expanded this farm to a size I was comfortable with, I decided to start on yet another project. This time, I wanted to set up a tree room. So I basically just began clearing out a small area that would be enough room to simply plant one tree. And my reasoning behind this was that even though I don't think I'll need a lot of wood early on, mostly just for sticks and stuff like that, I still don't want to have to be going to the surface every single time I need some wood because not only is there a very scary blizzard going on, but there's also going to very soon be tons of mobs surrounding my base at all times, which I don't really want to deal with because I don't want to die. There was one small issue though, and that was that in this mod pack, in order for a tree or any crop to grow underground, I was going to need a sunroof, which meant that I somehow needed to get my hands on some glass. Thankfully, as you guys probably remember, I had just mined into a freaking ocean the day before, and so I had plenty of sand that I could mine up and throw into my furnace to create some glass. And after I had mined up all the sand that I would need for this project, I just spent the rest of the day farming and expanding my cave root farm, and also crafted myself a flint and steel, which wasn't only going to be a useful item for keeping myself warm, but also for combat. Because remember those overpowered, chilled mobs that I was talking about earlier? Yeah, those things pretty much take no damage if they're not on fire when you hit them. So this flint and steel was going to be an essential component to any combat I was about to get into. On the start of day three, I began replacing the roof of my tree room with glass in order to create that sunroof that I was talking about earlier. And to my surprise, I was only about a third to maybe half of the way through with creating this sunroof when my tree suddenly grew, so I guess this project was working. As I was placing the glass though, I noticed that the constant downfall of snow was causing it to start piling up already on the glass that I had just placed like literally two minutes ago. And I was worried that this snow was going to block the sunlight from shining down on my tree and ultimately cause future saplings to not grow. So I decided I was going to have to make a journey up to the surface and place some torches on top of the glass to stop the snow from piling up. Uh oh. Yeah, that was a close one. Thankfully, the skeleton was far enough away that I was able to block it off really quickly and use my flint and steel and sword to quickly dispatch it, but it was almost like that thing was just waiting for me to take a trip to the surface, so that was a spooky one. But as easy as that fight was, it definitely was still a good warning to keep my eyes out for any other mobs as I was placing the torches on the surface. And I'll be honest with you, my heart was literally pounding every second I was on the surface placing those torches. I could not have been more excited to get the heck out of there and back down underground in my little bunker. And thankfully, I managed to place all of the torches without even seeing another mob in my vicinity and was able to scurry back down underground to safety. And to end off the day, I popped open my quest book and turned in some quests that I had been able to complete within my three days in this world, which rewarded me with some cloth, which in turn I used to craft a bed so that I could finally get some shut-eye. When I woke up on the morning of day four, I decided I quite liked the idea of being a farmer down here in my little underground bunker. And so for my next project, I set my sights on creating a hemp farm. You see, hemp was going to be a very, very valuable material to me because it could be used to craft string, which meant that I could circumvent the whole process of having to constantly fight spiders that could potentially kill me by just farming some hemp instead. But before I could start this hemp farm, I was first gonna need to actually get some hemp seeds because I didn't have any of those yet. Fortunately for me though, hemp seeds are a drop from grass and that lush cave that I was exploring on day one happened to have a lot of grass down in it. So I placed down some dirt, grabbed some water from that nearby ocean, and set myself up a little hemp farm. But there was just one tiny little issue, and that was, like I mentioned before, all crops need sunroofs. Hemp is a crop, which meant I was going to have to make myself another sunroof. So as I probably don't even need to tell you, day five began with me starting work on that sunroof. 
But as I was making it, I kept running into issues because the actual skyline was so high above where the crops were. So I decided to take another venture outside in order to try and make the process of creating this thing a lot easier. As I began to approach the area where I was trying to make the sunroof though, I heard a zombie growling off in the distance. Oh okay, I need glass. Are you serious right now? <sighs> oh my god. Yeah. If you didn't believe me before that these chilled mobs are crazy powerful, you probably do now. And if you're wondering what the heck that status effect on my hearts is right now, that's called the chilled effect. And it happens every single time that other spooky mob called the Wraith hits me. And what it does is very, very simple and also very, very terrifying. It completely blocks me from naturally regening hearts. But apparently that wraith was not done with me yet because when I went to trap it, it immediately followed up with another hit, dropping me down to three hearts with the chilled effect once again. At which point I decided that two near-death experiences was more than enough for one day and went to sleep with the intent to try again in the morning. So on day six, I just got right back to work, except this time I had a little change in plan. As opposed to going up to the surface to place the glass, I was just gonna do it from the safety of my underground bunker, like I had with the tree sunroof. But apparently even this strategy wasn't safe because as soon as I went to place the first piece of glass, a skeleton dropped down from the heavens right into my bunker. Thankfully, I was prepared for disaster and was able to use my shield and flint and steel to quickly take him out but let me just say, my heart was still racing during the fight. I managed to place the rest of the glass without any issues, but then it was once again time to make my return to the surface so that I could place the torches to stop the snow from piling up. But this time around, everything went completely smoothly and I was able to get the whole area torched up without any problem. And by the end of the day, my first crop of hemp had even already grown, so it looked like everything was going flawlessly. The next day, I decided that my first mission with this new hemp farm would be to use the string it produced to craft a fishing rod. Because not only would fishing be a good source of food in addition to my cave root farm, but I could also treasure fish in the future and potentially get some really good items that way. So I spent the day setting up a small fishing area while I waited for the hemp to grow. I also set up a small potential mob farm, but truth be told, I had no idea if that thing was gonna actually work. On day eight, I was finally able to get enough string to craft the fishing rod and began to do a little bit of fishing. My chat was quick to point out though that if I wanted to do treasure fishing, I was gonna have to expand my fishing area by a lot. So I spent the entirety of the next day and a half just taking my small little fishing area and expanding it into a five by five by five body of water. And speaking of chat, if you guys would like to be a part of these 100 days videos as they're being filmed live, you can follow my Twitch linked down in the description below where I stream almost every single day. Anyways, after I completed the expansion of my fishing room, I actually returned to doing some caving because not only were there still a bunch of rare ores and minerals that I was on the lookout for that could help improve my setup, but I also really wanted to get myself a bucket of lava because not only would it be an important resource for later on, but similarly to the flint and steel, it's also kind of a crazy crazy overpowered item for fighting those chilled mobs like you could probably imagine. I continued this caving adventure on day 11 and managed to find both fiery glass which is a great fuel source and also can be used to make some pretty powerful torches and also an extremely rare ore called silver which can create a weapon that is perfect for fighting undead mobs. Unfortunately on the following day when I attempted to craft this silver sword I found out the hard way that I didn't only need two silver ingots to craft the thing I needed a silver ingot and a silver block meaning I was gonna have to find a lot more of this ore before I could make that crazy OP sword. I also did manage to find a large body of lava during my caving trip on this day, but it was in a massive and scary cave guarded by lava monsters that shoot fireballs at you, so I figured uh, I would just find the lava I was looking for somewhere else. My search for lava continued on into the next day, but that initial big cave of lava that I found was literally so big that no matter where I went, everything seemed to connect back into that one cave. And this time around, the lava monster even gave me a warning shot to let me know that I should not come anywhere near it. 
I eventually decided to try digging in the complete opposite direction of that lava cave in the hopes that I could just find literally any other cave besides that one. I ran into some trouble though when I stumbled across a spider spawner and this one singular spider managed to knock me down all the way to three hearts. I eventually figured out how to use my flint and steel and some blocks to my advantage where I could basically fight these spiders without ever being anywhere near them. And that allowed me to finally get down there and break the spawner and loot the chest that it was hiding. Unfortunately, the items inside that chest were pretty terrible. Throughout my next couple days of caving, I didn't manage to find any lava, but I did manage to find some mushrooms which even though those probably don't sound like they're too useful, they were actually going to be the basis for upgrading my armor set to the next level. The process of actually getting from mushroom to upgrading my armor set though is a little bit complicated. So put on your thinking caps for a second and bear with me while I go through the process of how this all worked. All right, so the first step was to craft something called the Petal Apothecary, which can be used to create these flowers that have some pretty cool and pretty powerful abilities. I then made myself a special type of bone meal called Floral Fertilizer and used it on some dirt to get mystical flowers. I then took these mystical flowers and combined them in that Petal Apothecary with some of those shrooms I found earlier and created the Pure Daisy. Then by surrounding this pure daisy with logs, I was able to create living wood, and by surrounding it with stone, I was able to create living stone. I then used these materials to craft a wand of the forest, a mana pool, and a mana spreader. Next, I carved out an entirely new room where I could set up these items, and I linked the mana spreader to the mana pool using that wand of the forest. Finally, I used the petal apothecary once again to craft a different type of flower called the endoflame, which, when placed next to a mana spreader and given coal, will actually power that mana spreader and start sending mana into the linked mana pool which I could then throw iron ingots into this generated mana and create mana steel, which was going to be the basis for my new set of armor and tools. Around this time, it also started to get kind of lonely down in my bunker all by myself, so I decided to make myself a friend who we'll call Frosty. Somehow, my Twitch chat also managed to convince me to shear Frosty, and uh, he just hasn't looked quite right ever since. Over the next couple of days though, I continued to work on grinding out enough mana steel ingots so that I could get myself a full armor set as well as a full set of tools. It turns out though that it's pretty expensive to keep that endo flame powered with a bunch of coal so that my mana spreader was constantly generating mana for me, so I ended up actually having to do some more caving just to go find some more coal. And during this caving journey, I once again got myself into some mob fights, but honestly my skills must have been improving because I handled myself much better this time around. And at long last, on day 24, I finally started crafting my mana steel items. Also, for some reason, the mana steel pickaxe has this really weird ability where when you right click with it, it can place torches from your inventory. I don't know what the relation between mana steel and placing torches is, but honestly, it was kind of useful, so I'll take it. And I guess this was just a crazy action-packed day, because I also ran into a boss bar zombie, which are these super overpowered mobs with custom abilities that are supposed to drop really good loot. Apparently though, I'm just super unlucky, because when I killed this thing, it dropped the most garbage loot of all time. Anyways though, on day 25, I was able to craft my full and complete set of mana steel armor and tools. And things just kept getting better from here, because finally, after two days of searching on day 27, I finally got myself a bucket of lava. And I mentioned to you guys earlier that this bucket of lava was going to be a great item for combat, but what I didn't mention is that it was also the key to beginning my journey to becoming a fire wizard. And obviously, becoming a fire wizard not only sounds super sick, but would also be insanely useful during a permanent blizzard. So I immediately got to work on crafting some of these things that I would need in order to begin this process. But of course, nothing is ever that easy in this cruel world. Because my next mission was to hunt down some element sources, which only spawn on the surface. And just like clockwork, I walked literally two steps out of my underground bunker and was immediately attacked by a chilled skeleton. Thankfully, at this point in my adventure, I had enough experience fighting these things that I was able to take it out. But in the process of trying to light the thing on fire, I nearly burned down my entire cave root and hemp farm, which would have had disastrous consequences. But fortunately, I was able to stop the burning in time. I was absolutely determined to find these element sources though, so on the morning of day 29, I exited my bunker once again. 
And surprisingly, for what felt like the first time ever, there was not a mob waiting to murder me as soon as I walked out. So I quickly took note of the coordinates of my base so that I could easily find my way back later and began searching for these elements. And after only about a minute of searching, I found my first one, a air element source. It wasn't the fire element that I was really, really searching for, but it would still be useful. So I filled up a tank of it and continued searching. As I made my way into a forest, I was suddenly attacked by a chilled skeleton. And at this point in my adventure, I should have been well equipped to take this thing out, but all the snow piled up on the ground made it way harder than it should have been to try and light this thing on fire. Thankfully, the skeleton walked right into one of the leaves I had accidentally lit on fire in my panic of spamming my flint and steel, which made it super easy to take out. And as I made my way out of those woods, I saw it the fire element source. I hastily took out the zombie that was seemingly defending this element source and then began siphoning it into one of my containers. It seemed like the mobs were out in full force now though because as I went to collect my container a zombie began to approach me so I decided I didn't want to push my luck too much and began making my way back towards my bunker. But as I was running back disaster struck once again. Oh no ice elemental. That's really bad. Oh no. Oh, I might be, it might be GG for me. By some incredible stroke of luck though, I managed to quickly scale a mountain and make it back to my base, escaping the ice elemental. But that was way too close for comfort. If that thing had gotten just one more hit on me, I was most likely dead. But I wasn't, I was alive, and in the interest of keeping it that way, I decided to take a little break from all those outside excursions and instead do some strip mining. And during this trip, I actually found five more of that silver ore that I had been looking for, meaning if I could just find two more, I could get that silver sword that I had really been wanting. I noticed my pickaxe had gotten pretty low on durability from all the mining though, so I spent the next two days improving my mana generation setup to help repair my pickaxe, and also just to make it easier to repair the rest of my tools and armor in the future. Once my pickaxe was fully repaired though, I returned to strip mining, but this time around, I wanted to go much, much lower. In particular, I went to a Y level of five in the hopes of finding diamonds and redstone. And although I was 50% successful in that quest as I did manage to find some redstone, I also found out that lava is extremely terrifying when just the heat from being close to it started killing me. Oh my God, okay. Bro, the heat hurts. The cold does not hurt as much as the heat does, my God. I took this redstone though and actually used it to set up an automatic coal dispenser for my mana generating flowers. Basically it would just drop the coal down onto the flower and a pressure plate and then whenever the flower consumed the coal, the pressure plate would be lifted up and more coal would be dropped down. I still wanted to complete the other 50% of that personal quest I had though and find those diamonds. So after this contraption was set up, it was back to mining. Wait was that diamonds? That was diamonds? Oh. Ho, ho, ho. Okay, I don't know how I'm gonna do this though. Oh, how are we gonna do this? This is such bad positioning. Look at me go, baby. A diamond. Oh my God. Okay, let me get rid of this inert crystal. Oh my God. One. Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh my god. One singular diamond? And of course, one diamond was not going to cut it, so the mining saga continued. I had quite the scary run-in with lava though, where I nearly overheated to death, so I spent some time breaking ice to collect ice cubes in the hopes that by eating those, I could keep myself cool during these mining sessions. Ultimately though, that idea was a total failure and the ice cubes did seemingly nothing, so I was just gonna have to deal with the heat for now. But apparently it didn't matter anyway, because on day 40, I hit the mother load when I found not one, not two, not four, but six diamonds from one vein, which definitely more than made up for that other vein of one singular diamond earlier. 
and I was pretty satisfied with this amount of diamonds for the time being. So I decided to return my attention to some elemental stuff. This time around, I wanted to actually start crafting the items that would allow me to wield fire magic and use it to kill these chilled mobs. But one of the main components in these recipes is drenched iron ingots, which was gonna require me to get some water element. I was pretty hesitant to go wandering around on the surface looking for elements again though, so I decided to go for a safer alternative this time around. Basically, I just set up a small mob trap at the front of my bunker because mobs have a chance to drop element shards that can be broken down into a very small amount of that particular element. And honestly, this mob farm ended up working probably better than I would have expected it to, but unfortunately, the mobs just weren't dropping element shards at a rate that was going to work for me, so I was going to have to figure out a different solution. And that was when I realized that my base was literally next to a massive ocean full of squid and fish who just so happened to drop exclusively water element shards. So I immediately got to farming these things. It was admittedly a bit difficult to farm these shards while also trying to not freeze to death or drown, but I eventually managed to get enough of them to make myself two drenched iron ingots. And I actually ended up needing to go on a little mining trip to try and find iron. And in the process of looking for it, I also happened to find a massive vein of silver, which meant that on day 47, I was able to make two huge accomplishments. The first one was finally crafting that overpowered silver sword that I had basically been trying to get since like day 10 or whatever. And on top of that, I was able to use the drenched iron ingots to craft the fire element holder, which was going to allow me to power my fire spells once I finally got my hands on some. Now, the next material that I needed to actually get started crafting these fire spell scrolls was paper, which meant that I was going to need to find some sugar cane. Honestly though, I was feeling pretty confident now that I had added both a silver sword and a bucket of lava to my combat arsenal. So I exited my bunker and began my search for cane. But after over two days of searching, I still had yet to find even a single piece of cane out in the wild. And once I heard the sounds of an ice elemental, I decided it was time to go back into my bunker because I did not want to deal with one of those things again. <sighs> okay, okay. Yeah, we cannot play with an ice elemental. Jesus. Are you kidding me? Yes. Somehow, an ice elemental had managed to spawn inside of my bunker. Thankfully, for the moment, I was blocked off and was safe from his attacks, but I obviously couldn't just stay here forever, so I was gonna have to figure out a way to kill this thing. As I mined these blocks, though, and crept back into the main part of my base, I could still hear the ice elemental firing his shots, but I couldn't see him anywhere. But then, as I peeked around the corner into my fishing area, there he was. He fired a shot at me, but I quickly managed to dodge it and block off the area so he couldn't get out. So now the elemental was trapped, but I obviously didn't want to just leave this guy roaming around in my base for the rest of the time, so I needed to figure out a way to kill it. I first attempted to use a bow and some regular arrows to take the thing out, before realizing that since it's a frozen mob, regular arrows aren't going to do anything. They needed to be fire arrows. I only had enough materials to craft eight fire arrows though, so if I ran out of these, that was it. Meaning that every shot I attempted at this guy needed to be a good one. My first arrow was a miss. Arrow number two was also a miss. My third arrow, another miss. Things were starting to look pretty bad. Finally though, on arrow number four, I got a hit. And arrow number five was once again a hit. And arrow number six was the nail in the coffin, taking out the ice elemental. That was way, way too close of a fight, but I was still alive and that's all that mattered. Kind of anticlimactically though, the ice elemental didn't drop anything. You would think for such an intense and crazy boss battle, I would get something cool out of it, but no, I guess all I got was the satisfaction of killing one. But as satisfying as it was, I would be just as happy to never fight one again. So I made sure to spend the rest of that day just fixing up the lighting in my base. The next day though, I was still determined to find that sugar cane. So I made my way back up to the surface. This time though, I was immediately greeted by a swarm of mobs. And things went south very, very quickly. Before I knew it, I was down to two hearts with the shield effect preventing my regen. And I thought for sure, this was the end of our 100 days. By some miracle though, I managed to build my way away from the mobs and box myself like a fish. 
And after seeing like 17 mobs all in the span of 5 seconds, I was not about to risk walking around on the surface again. So I literally made a tunnel from where I was boxed in all the way back to my base to safety. Somehow in the madness of all that combat, I also managed to glitch out my lava bucket and I really wanted to get that back because it was a useful item to have. So I literally spent the entirety of day 52 messing around with it before finally getting it back. Obviously though, this whole process of trying to find sugarcane had caused way too much stress for me, so I decided to take a little bit of a break and work on some different projects before returning to searching for the cane. First, I spent a few days making a massive underground tunnel that would directly connect me to the fire element source and to the air element source. That way I could siphon energy from them without ever having to go to the surface and risk getting attacked by mobs. Next, I opened up my quest book and realized I had just been passively completing a bunch of quests but hadn't claimed the rewards for them. And by turning these in, I was able to get both a chicken spawn egg and some grass. So I set up a little farm area where my fishing area used to be. On day 59, I spawned in the chicken in that little farming area that I had just created. And on top of that, I also completed another quest that gave me a spawn egg for quite possibly the cutest animal of all time called the Chillu. I mean, just look at this guy. How could you not possibly love this thing? It is just downright adorable. On day 60, I used a ton of hemp that I had been farming over the past couple of days to make enough wool to craft a full set of wool armor. And wool armor is super, super useful in this world because it can be used to help raise your temperature and keep you warm. Unfortunately though, it's not really viable for combat, so it wasn't gonna work for running around on the surface. But the reason I had gotten it was for a different side mission. You see, in order to create a larger element container so that I could store a ton of that fire element, I was gonna need to get more of those drenched iron ingots from earlier, which meant that I was gonna have to return to the ocean and farm up some water shards again. So I figured that by using this wool armor, I could solve one of the issues I was having last time of freezing to death. I would still have to worry about drowning obviously, but at least that was just one thing that could potentially kill me as opposed to two. And after spending a full day farming those shards, I was able to make the big element container. I then took this thing through that tunnel that I made earlier, connected it up to the fire element source, and started filling it up. This container was pretty big though. In fact, it holds 100 times the amount of those small containers that I was filling up earlier. And because of that, it naturally takes a lot more time to fill up in the first place. So while I was waiting for it to fill up, I decided to take the opportunity to turn the area into a little outpost of sorts. I didn't do anything too fancy with it, but I basically just set up some glass so that I could keep an eye out on any mobs in the area. On day 64, I set up something similar at the exact location for the air element and collected the big container of fire element that was now 100% full, which left me needing only one more material to finally begin creating these fire spells, sugarcane. So on day 65, the hunt was back on. But after how close I came to dying last time, I was not really interested in running around on the surface again to look for this cane. Instead, I was going to continue this massive underground tunnel, but now start using a roof of glass so that I could look out on the surface to try and find some cane. This way I could explore entirely new areas and search for cane in them, while also not risking dying to a swarm of chilled mobs. This hunt started off terribly though. Through the first two days, I had literally found nothing. I even exited the tunnel at one point to kind of run around on the surface for a little bit and see if maybe I could find Kane that way, but still had no luck. Just when I had started to give up hope though, on day 68, I found two pieces of cane on the surface. Now, of course though, I didn't just want to immediately use up the cane I had found because then I would just have to do a search for it again later. So I planted down these two pieces of cane and the wait for them to grow officially began. I decided to replant the first two pieces of cane that grew though so that I could have a small farm later on because I was probably going to need more paper eventually. This ended up turning in the wait for me to get all the cane I needed though into a five day long affair. In the meantime though, I expanded my sunroof, got a baby chicken, converted some rotten flesh into leather for books, and farm some zombies for more rotten flesh. Finally though, on day 74, the last piece of cane I needed grew and it was time to start getting these fire spells. Now, there is a bit of an RNG component involved in this process though. Because first off, there are three fire spells in total that I needed to collect. And each time I use fire crystals to create one, there is a completely random chance that I will either get one of those three scrolls or I will get absolutely nothing at all. Thankfully, my first ever scroll creation went well and I obtained the fireball scroll, which is pretty self-explanatory because it allows me to shoot fireballs. <laughs> 
Unfortunately, I immediately felt the pain of RNG because the second time I tried to create a scroll, it completely failed and I got nothing. On day 75 though, I had some more success when I was able to craft the Flame Cleave spell. This one will strike any enemies in a certain radius of me and light them on fire. Unfortunately, on my second attempt to craft a scroll on this day, I once again felt some pain when it completely failed. And after getting a duplicate scroll on day 76, I actually ran out of the inert crystal material I needed to craft these things. So I went for a little mining session to get more of it, but when I came back and crafted another scroll, I got my third copy of Flame Cleave. Flame Cleave again! Oh my god. Over the course of the next three days, I alternated between failed scrolls, duplicate scrolls, and having to go mine more inert crystal. I did find a dungeon with some pretty decent loot in it during one of these mining sessions though, so that was pretty cool. Finally though, on day 80, the RNG gods decided to smile in my direction and gave me the Inferno scroll, which when activated will continuously drain a small amount of fire element from my inventory, but will light anything that comes near me on fire. Just like that though, I now had all three fire spells in my possession. As I started practicing using these spells though, I quickly realized that one fire element holder was not going to cut it because these things were pretty expensive to use. So I spent the entirety of day 81 just collecting water shards in the ocean again so that I could craft myself a second fire element holder. And on day 82, I did just that and crafted the holder. And with that completed, I now wanted to finally get enchanted because I had been putting it off for way too long. So I used some leftover diamonds from an earlier mining trip and crafted myself a diamond pickaxe. Then I headed down to lower levels where I could find some lava and make some obby. Whenever I tried to get near lava though, I would almost immediately begin overheating and I knew there was no way I was gonna have enough time to mine obsidian, so I needed to figure out another method. So on day 83, I began bucketing lava from way down at those super low Y levels and then bringing it back up to my base and creating and mining the obby there. This was definitely a much more tedious method of getting obsidian, but it was the only way I could do it without dying, so I didn't have any choice. But it worked in my favor because before the end of the day, I had crafted an enchanting table. On day 84 though, I ran into a little problem when I realized I had no leather to make books and therefore couldn't make bookshelves. Thankfully, I found out there was an item called the mana pylon, which I had just enough materials to craft, which would automatically give 16 levels to the enchanting table. And while I was looking through what enchants I could get on my armor or tools, I saw that I could get an enchant called cooling on my legs. And I assumed that this enchant would be fantastic for helping me mine at lower levels since I was constantly overheating. So I went ahead and put the enchant on my pants. Then on day 85, I also saw that the enchant was now available for my helmet, so I put it on that too. Unfortunately, it didn't really seem to do much because as soon as I went down to the area with lava in it again, I almost immediately started overheating. But then as I was trying to find a direction I could dig in that didn't have lava nearby, something insane happened. Maybe? <gasps> no way! You guys, I swear I am not hacking. <laughs> I swear I do not have expert. Oh my god! What a vein! Oh my god! It's still going! It's still going! It's still going! Oh my god! 11 diamonds! That's disgusting! Yeah, that was pretty nuts. And it was also super clutch because it allowed me to craft another one of those mana pylons which boosted my enchanting table's level up to 30. And with this new and improved enchanting table, the first thing I wanted to do was enchant my sword at level 30 to make it super powerful. I was a bit short on levels though, so I decided to do a little bit of mining to try and get up to level 30. And during this mining session, I found a spawner that had two loot chests next to it. And inside these chests was some gunpowder, which might not seem significant to you guys now, but in just a little bit, I'll explain why that was insanely clutch. Anyways though, on day 87, I hit level 30 and enchanted my sword. Oh! What a good set of enchants! And I also got a really good opportunity to test the sword out because that night my base got hit by a massive swarm of zombies. This zombie swarm even continued on into the next day and I guess they really wanted to kill me for some reason because when I returned to mining to get more enchanting levels, they were still following me like a hundred blocks away so they were out for blood. Once I hit level 30 again though, I went back and enchanted my chest plate and got protection 4 on it. And after that, I was pretty satisfied with all the enchanting I had done so on day 8, 
89, I began creating the room for my final big project. And this project was to get the extendo grip. An item that when equipped in your offhand increases your reach by like three or four blocks. Meaning that if I got into some combat with this item, I could literally hit mobs from like five or six blocks away. Getting this item though was a pretty intensive process that would eventually require me to create some complex machinery. But my very first mission was going to be to travel to the nether because to get started on this machinery, I was going to need quartz. So on day 90, I repeated that very tedious process of getting obsidian until I had enough for a portal. Portal. I was really scared to go to the nether though because not only in this pack are there some crazy dangerous mobs there but it's also very very easy to overheat to death but if I wanted this OP item I had no other choice so I went through the portal and into the nether. Thankfully when I got there I was able to breathe a big sigh of relief as the spawn point I had gotten was pretty much perfect. So I mined as much quartz as I could possibly find and then took this back to the overworld and used it to create the alloy I was going to need for the machinery. And on day 92 I got started setting everything up. First thing was to create a source of power so I laid down some water wheels and put water to get them flowing. Then I crafted a press which was the first machine I was going to need and hooked it up to the water wheel using some gears to give it power. And then I used the press to turn one of my gold ingots into a gold sheet which I could use to craft the engineer's goggles. An item that would allow me to look at any of these machines and see how much power they were getting so that I could troubleshoot any issues I was going to potentially have. Then on day 93 I got started on the second machine I was going to need called the mixer. I then once again hooked it up to my water wheel for power but it seemingly wasn't going fast enough. On day 94 though I figured out how to set up a bunch of cogs together and increase the speed of the machine. And now the final thing I needed to get the mixer going was a source of heat. But the only thing that can actually provide this source of heat is a blaze. Which might make you think that I was going to have to return to the nether, go find a blaze, and risk dying trying to capture it. Fortunately for my safety though, I found a really obscure method to summon a blaze using an item called the Fell Pumpkin, which is where that gunpowder from earlier comes into play, because until I got that, I did not have a single piece of gunpowder to my name. And as you might have guessed, this Fell Pumpkin requires one piece of gunpowder as part of its crafting recipe. So I crafted the Fell Pumpkin, used it to spawn and capture a blaze, fired up that blaze using some coal as fuel, and mixed together some brass, which was the key component in crafting the Extendo Grip. Now the final step was to make mechanical crafters which would be used to create the extendo grip. So I spent day 95 getting the materials together and creating these things and also hooking it up to the water wheel once again for power. But then I put my materials in, waited a little bit while they were all combined together, and then I finally got the extendo grip. And on day 96, as my first way to showcase this brand new item, I took it into the nether to go mine for more quartz. And as you can see, it makes that process quite a lot easier. I continued using it to mine on day 97 until I hit level 30 once again. Then I went back to my base and enchanted my boots at level 30 and got some really good enchants on them. On day 98, I went ham once again with the extendo grip mining to get myself back to level 30 so that I could enchant these diamond pants with protection in order to replace my man of steel leggings which obviously didn't have protection. I also got into a fight with a baby zombie that seemingly wouldn't die, but as you can see here, the extendo grip makes combat so much easier, dude. I was able to constantly keep this thing at bay. Honestly, without the extendo grip, that thing might have killed me because it took me like two or three minutes to kill it. I don't know why, but it was invincible. Finally though, for days 99 and 100, I decided to totally revamp the front of my bunker into a massive glass outpost. This took quite a long time, mainly because the chilled zombies and skeletons would simply not stop harassing me while I was doing it. But once again, the extendo grip was just absolutely carrying me and it was super easy to fend off any mob that came near. And as day 100 came to a close, I put a small finishing touch on the outpost by adding a lava moat to the front to try and trap any chilled mobs that came near. But for now, that's all. So if you guys want to see a 200 days video on this mod pack, let me know by leaving a like on this video and subscribing to my channel. Also, make sure you guys go and download Core using the link in the description. It is a completely free way to support my channel and help me keep making videos like these ones.